We now cross over to the Kenyatta International Conference Center where a South African business forum is underway. Caroline Jenga is on standby. Caroline, good afternoon. Well, good afternoon, Irene Mchuma, as you've rightly put it. We are at Kenyatta International Conference Center, where a high business forum is currently ongoing between Kenya uh, business as, uh, delegates as well as South Africa business delegates. Remember, as we had earlier on say that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa, is currently here in the country, and he is at State House with uh, President William Ruto discussing bilateral talks and how we can deep and relations between these two uh, countries and on the sideline we have business delegates from South Africa and from Kenya who are meeting right here at KICC to discuss some of the areas that they can work on to ensure that we improve or grow trade between the two countries at the moment or currently uh, trade uh, there's a trade imbalance between Kenya and South Africa and mostly is skewed towards uh, South Africa and some of these talks will see how to remove uh, barriers that are existing uh, that are uh, that are, that are making trade impossible or rather making ensuring that this trade imbalance is, is is ongoing and we will be speaking to flora mutahi right now who is the chairperson of capsa and also the ceo of melvin's tea to talk about how, what are the opportunities available uh, between kenya and south africa that uh, business uh, business uh, the private sector can explore and and and, and complement to ensure that we grow uh, the trade currently trade between kenya and africa Africa, and sorry in South Africa is about 36.09 million USD that is of of 2021 and this has grown from uh, 30, uh, that is 30 point uh, 30, 30 million uh, that was that was in 2020 there has been uh, some growth there just because because uh, last year we saw president or rather the former president uh, president Uhuru Kenyatta went uh, to South Africa and had the similar talks uh, right there in South Africa and they came up with some of uh, MOUs uh, some uh, some uh, some of the areas they discussed on were trade barriers, removing of these trade barriers, ensuring that uh, the visa restrictions and visa requirements are, uh, are addressed, as well as ensuring that there is infrastructure development across uh, the, the African continent to ensure that we grow our trade and we trade amongst each other. And uh, just to speak to Flora right here with me, uh, maybe we can talk about this trade imbalance that exists between uh, South Africa and Kenya. We have been having this conversation for so long, ensuring that we improve of Kenya's um, uh, when it comes to uh, growing this uh, uh, trade. Maybe you can tell us where can we start as Kenya to ensure that our trade, our trade grows. Thank you very much and um, like you had rightfully said, there was a meeting, there was a meeting of, um, in, Ke in South Africa, Pretoria actually, where we discussed uh, the issues and what we did is we take each and every tariff line to ensure that um, we have a discussion on it. This is where we are going to begin by having such bilateral, uh, um, I mean, having agreements. And then we give it up to our government to, to give us better policies, um, better, if possible, bilateral agreements. But today, considering we have the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, um, we had our, our, our PS has just mentioned that Kenya has already um, given, um, has, has given them the instruments for the, for the, um, on the on the East African side, but we uh, but we are waiting for the for um, the South African side to also position their instruments to allow bilateral trade. Once we have bilateral trade on the African continent, then Africa can do business with Africa. What will that do? All these infrastructure changes, um, um, you know, lack of investments, where it is cheaper for me to go to London than to go to South Africa. All those will be addressed because now there will be volumes. Uh, investors will look and see that it is possible. I mean that the money will be in be, will be returned. There's a lot we can do with each other. Like I gave a challenge, we are all importing from various countries, but we're not importing from each other. So once we have by agreements, like for example the Continental Free Trade Agreement, or we, you know, they're, they're members of um, SADC, we're members of the East African Community. What if we just got those two working together? Perhaps under the East African uh, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, again, 
um, would be able to do a lot of business together. Okay. Maybe if you can paint for us a picture of, of how the trade looks are like in Africa in terms of percentage. I remember in your speech you say that uh, Af intra-Africa trade uh, ranges between 15% uh, and 19%. Yes, intra-Africa trade, for Africa trading with each other is about 15 to 19%. Inter-Asian trade is about 45%, so Asia trading with Asia. The Europeans are are at 65, go, actually go heading on 70%. And this was from the, 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 the making um, the EU a, a customs union. So we are well on the way with the East African community, but the Africa continental free trade is going to be the game changer. Everybody's scrambling for Africa right now. Why? We have, we have the resources, we have a bulging youth, we have the land. This is where we are going to do business next. But are we doing business with each other? There's something that um, one of the speakers said and said uh, about 4,500 products uh, that we, ex we Kenya and, Afri and South Africa export from other countries. Yet some of these products we can be able to, to import and export from each other. Maybe from, your li from where you sit, how can this be achieved? This can be achieved by removing tra uh, tariff and non-tariff barriers. I'll give you an example. Of course, you know I'm the MD of Melvin's Tea. Um, to take tea into, into South Africa is 100% duty. So if it's four dollars, it's, it's it's going to be eight dollars. Now that does not make the product competitive. Those are the areas we are saying remove those areas because they are importing tea from other countries in the in, in the world. In fact, from their own um, um, other partners that they have signed bilateral. So we are saying let's open up our lines. There is empirical evidence that once um, that bilateral trade, globalization, really trade does promote um, you know socioeconomic growth, economies, and does give jobs to the to everybody. Why? Because if I deal with my competitive advantage, for example, Kenya has the tea, the coffee, and they deal with whatever their competitive ad advantage is. It could be from their waters, um, you know, they're mineral rich. Everybody deals with their competitive advantages, bring down, down that cost, we trade with each other. We're driving our own efficiencies. This is what is going to make a difference globally when we all decide to trade with each other, and we can do it in sections. So Africa now has committed and wants to trade with each other. We're talking about a, 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 you know, a population of 1.2 billion people, a youth population. What does that look like? That is consumption. And remember, like for us in Kenya, the service industry is way ahead even of the products industry. So how much, what services can we give them? You know, what services can they give us? We have, we have a very talented youth. This talent can be, can be exported to those countries. So there's a lot, there's a lot of capacity building. They're very, they're very advanced in their manufacturing, remember, because, because of their, their, their history.